So what do you think about the ratio where we are, um, women serving in Congress and the Senate <coughs> related to the number of men? We're getting there. Uh, I mean, we're about 16% of the, uh, of the, of the House, um, where I think it, yeah, we have a, a record number of, of women. There's 76 women in the House of Representatives now, uh, 17 in the Senate. Um, you know, we're getting there, but we're kind of stuck around the same percentage as we have been for, you know, a pretty long time now. <coughs> and, uh, you know, I mean, I, I don't, I don't really, I hate to say it, but I don't really see us <coughs> breaking into much larger percentages unless in terms of employment and balancing family, it becomes somehow easier than it, than it is now. Because it's, you know, I mean, I'm doing it, but it, it's not easy. Um, and so to, for women to make a decision, especially women with younger kids, um, you know, I, I made a decision to run for office when I was 26 years old. I was elected to the state house at 26. Um, I was the youngest woman ever elected to the legislature in Florida history. Um, but, you know, it's really, I, I mean, that was 16 years ago, and I'm still the youngest woman. You know, there's not been a younger woman than me, and there really hasn't even, I mean, the closest woman um, age-wise to me was maybe 30, 31 um, since then. Uh, and she was single, um, so, and no children, and still doesn't have children. So it's, um, you know, you, it's really difficult to, when I, I'll give it, here, I'll put it this way. When I speak to groups of young women, which I try to do all the time, and they, they, they ask, you know, how do you do it? How did you break into this? How are you able to balance? Um, you know, I can tell them all the things, you know, all the different tricks of the trade and, you know, ways that I juggle, but the only thing that I, I sort of joke, but it's true, the only advice I can't give them is how to, um, how to meet a guy like my husband. Um, yeah. <laughs> you know, because really, one of the big challenges for women um, either if they're single it's not such a challenge but if they're married you know getting their husband to agree to take on as much responsibility as a spouse has to take on when their wife is running for office and then serving in office um, and then to actually do the job well I mean I could just be a member of Congress and show up to work and fly back and forth and go to my committee meetings and do nothing else but I wouldn't be a very effective member of Congress if I did that so you know, I, I kind of go into hyperdrive when it comes to the other things that I'm involved in, so you don't have to do as much as I do. But um, I don't really see us increasing our percentage of the, the House and the Senate unless we find a way to make it easier for, for women to serve. What's your week like? <coughs> I mean, so, because I know you it used to be when you were elected to Congress that you came to Washington, you brought your family, and this is where you stayed. So you really didn't go back to your district, right. and that culture began to change, I'd say, 15 to 20 years ago, yeah. where the right. representative was really expected to be back. And I don't even know how people do it who live way oh, further out, like gosh. California and those kinds of things. So how does your week usually work? Well, we, we are now that well, once the Democrats took the majority, we um, changed it from a three-day week, a uh, two-and-a-half-day week, really. When, the Repu when I was elected, uh, my first two years I was in the minority, and we had a Tuesday to Thursday schedule. So people, you know, at home would say, you know, gosh, how do you do it? And I, I was really, you know, almost embarrassed. I said, well, you know, I, I'd leave on Tuesday morning after I drop the kids off at school, and I'd come back Thursday night um, because we weren't working very hard um, when, uh, when the Republicans were in control. But we went to five-day weeks when, when the Democrats took over the majority. That was a little, a little over the top. Um, five-day weeks, there was a lot of family rebellion um, among the members, and so we, we readjusted to a four-day week uh, mostly. So normally I would leave on either Monday after I drop my kids off at school, and I and I schedule that. I mean, I mean, the way I do this is I schedule everything. I mean, my enti my children's entire schedule goes on my schedule, on my public schedule, so everybody sees it, and knows uh, what what what. Family vacations, trust me, every bit every, of it, everything, everything. dinners, everything. Uh, that's right, family time, dinners, baseball, Girl Scouts, everything. Um, and I've had to lay down the law. I, look, it took a good a year and a half to make sure that my single staff, mostly single, no children staff, understood that they could not just run over my family time. Uh, you know, they were scheduling, oh, you know, so what? She doesn't have to go to Rebecca's practice. You know, she doesn't have to go to Jake's baseball game. Well, then you tell Rebecca and, and Jake and Steve why I'm not going to be able to be there because you scheduled over it. So we got that sorted out. but. Um, so I leave either um, Tuesday, Monday morning after I drop them off and I come back Thursday night or I leave Tuesday morning and I come back you know, fri Friday afternoon or, or night. So it, it 
works out that I am home three and a half days and I'm here three and a half days. And when I was first elected, uh, I sat down with Diana DeGette, who was one of my um, you know, assigned mentors, and she represents a district in Colorado, in Denver. And for the first five years that she was uh, here, she, her fa she had moved her family to Washington, um, and then she, but she absolutely told me, and then Pat Schroeder, uh, who represented the district before her, we all ha my children were one and a half and, uh, and five when I was elected. Um, her advice was, do not move your family to Washington. And it was the best advice I could have gotten in terms of how to balance because she said what would happen when her family was here. She ended up moving them back because when her family was here, you know, we have a ridiculous schedule. We vote at night all the time. There are things that, at night that I, that I have to go to. She said she would, she would have, and her husband has a very full-time career, uh, you know, my, my, her husband less flexible than mine, but that she would be literally having to race home to relieve the nanny, go back out to vote at night, then fly home to her district on the weekends, and so she never saw her kids. So she said the way you can balance it is that if your family's in the district, when you're, you know, you do whatever you need to do in Washington, you don't really have to worry about it, you know, laugh, laugh, but, you know, you're not, uh, I'm only responsible for myself in terms of my physical presence, uh, you know, when I'm in Washington, and then you fly home to your district and you can, you know, at least be there and, and see them. Um, but the way that I found I'm, I'm able to do it is by being very rigid in terms of putting my children's schedule on my schedule first and then, and then building my schedule around that. But part of the reason that I have the luxury of doing that, though, is that I'm from a safe, I represent a safe Democratic district. So if I were in a competitive seat, it, it would be, see, oh, that's why all, the, all these different things go into, into a decision for a woman to, to, to run for office. I mean, if I was like my roommate, Melissa Bean, who has, you know, her daughters are uh, in high school now, but when we were first elected, they were in middle school. Um, you know, it, it was hard for her because she was constantly having to watch her back, raise money, you know, focus on the campaign, do the job. And so when she got home, she was running around all over the place um, doing things to help make sure that she would get reelected and serve her constituents. And so she was home and didn't see her kids, and she was here and didn't, didn't see her kids. So I, I'm... I'm very aware of how fortunate I am. One of the things that I'm always curious about, to run for office, no matter how popular you are, no matter how great your agenda items are, <coughs> um, there's always different In our family, we go from one extreme to the other. Mm -hmm. We go far right and far <laughs> left, yes, and I do. won't name names. <laughs> um, we certainly do. But, but, but we all manage to get through. But how do you deal, I mean, we can certainly engage in, in interesting debates and topics, but how do you deal when you, when you make the decision that you're going to be criticized? And you're going to be publicly criticized. Mm -hmm. How did you come to manage that feeling about that? Um, well, you know, I developed a very thick skin over 16 years in office, and I didn't have one at all. Well, I mean, and also imagine when I was, when I first ran, I was 25. Um, you know, I don't know many 25-year-olds that have a thick skin and, you know, are very willing to withstand criticism. But I, the way I was elected the first time is I knocked on 25,000 doors in my district. I had no money. I had a six-way Democratic primary. I w only lived in my community for three years. No one thought I could win. You know, they all kind of, all the good old boys told me, that's very nice. You're running for the House? I, we'll, we'll, we'll see you in a few years. Um, but I made up in shoe leather what I lacked in, uh, in, in resources and walked eight hours a day, seven days a week for six months. Um, went to neighborhoods and knocked on doors of people who had never seen, had a candidate knock on their door in their 20 years and living in that house. Um, it went rain or shine, wet, dripping wet in my slicker, my husband's slicker actually, I didn't even have a slicker then. Um, walked in 95 degree weather and uh, I still have people today who say, you know, I remember when you first knocked on my door um, and they didn't care what I stood for, I was there willing to, to you know, ask for their support um, and also withstand their, their criticism or concern and so over the years being really involved and and connected to the people that I represent has has helped me um, just really understand that, that that's their role I mean they, they are I don't know everything and they they're not always going to agree with me um, and I try to explain well you're not always going to agree with me but at least you know at least you uh, will know that you have someone up here fighting for what you believe in on balance. And uh, I mean, the most gratifying thing is when Republicans in my district come up to me and say, you know, Debbie, you're the only Democrat I vote for because I know that I can count on you. I know that you're up there for the right reasons. I don't agree with you on everything, but 
you know, I know I can count on you. But, um, you know, and, and I, I would not be truthful if, um, and I'm looking over at Tracy, my chief of staff, because, you know, she's kind of the one that always counsels me not to take some of the stuff that, that to heart. The advent of blogs have, um, have definitely um, weakened, uh, weakened my armor uh, a little bit when it comes to criticism because, you know, there's a different, I, I, I really have been able to, to deal with the direct criticism, you know, one-on-one -on -one or the, the, the traditional criticism, someone calling my office and saying they don't like what I've chosen to do or say or, you know, writing a letter. But, you know, electronic communication really has liberated people to say anything they want in any way that they want to and uh, whether it regardless of truth regardless of fact checking and it's really disturbing uh, I mean I, I happen to love the blogs and the, the, the net roots and I think it's a really important medium but um, I, I had to get through you know, the blog criticism and thicken my skin against that so I'm okay now now I can handle that too yeah I think it just takes time I don't, I don't yeah. think there's a shortcut I mean you have to realize people are gonna have different views oh yeah and, and you have to deal with tough issues right. e even more so now as long as they don't get personal you know I mean I, I'm completely fine if someone doesn't agree with me on an issue you know and I can debate with the best of them and I recognize that they're, that they're not gonna like everything I do um, you know it's when people start to get personal that uh, and, and and that happens and uh, you know the, the difficult part <sighs> the, the difficult part of of what any successful woman does any successful person but it seems more it seems like it happens more with women is and this is a lesson I learned from from Tracy um, she she always reminds me that just don't, just remember that not everybody is going to be happy for your success and that uh, you, you know you might be you know, del delighted and excited and elated about, you know, wow, you know, I internally, like, wow, look, look at what, I, what I've accomplished, look at what we've done. Um, but you kind of, especially in politics, have to remember that, they, and in business too, there are people around you that are going to be wish that they were you. And so you just kind of have to be careful uh, in that regard and not, not mistrust people, but just, just be careful and, and aware. And so, you know, that's just, that was an, an important lesson for me. Um, I, I tend to be a little bit naive when, when it comes to the relationships that uh, that I that I build. Um, I like to help everybody, and I'm a you know no task too small kind of person, and I roll my sleeves up. And you know, if you need assistance, and sometimes uh, what I've um, what I've been cautioned against, which I refuse to change the way the way I do things, um, is you know. The relationships that I have, that the impression of my staff is that I do way more for others than those individuals do for me. But it, you know, what they do for me is not what it's about for me. I just I'm a team player, and I want to just I, I, I want to help you know get the job done. And in my business, helping individuals get elected to the Congress is uh, is how we do that.